What's up YouTube, it's Sean here, and I'm here today to give you guys a review of the Nike Air Force One Low Retro in this Color of the Month series in the white and royal blue colorway. Today's video is sponsored by Hefalux. Hefalux is my all-time favorite sneaker insoles, and they sell ETP insoles, which really is the same material you'll find inside Adidas Boost. So if you're looking to add some additional comfort inside your shoes, be sure to check out their website, which I've linked down below in the description box. You'll see they sell a variety of different insoles, so depending on the type of insole density and the cushioning setup you're looking for, you're gonna find this is a suitable insole for everyone. So I've been a paying customer of Hefalux for years now, and to me, I personally find them to be extremely comfortable. So if you guys wanna check them out and try a pair for yourself, be sure to use the code BOO, that's B-O-O at checkout, and get 33% off your entire purchase. So this right here is a special edition Nike Air Force One, which celebrates the Color of the Month series, which dates back to the early days of the Air Force One back in the mid 80s. So the original Air Force One High debuted back in 1982. And back then, retro-wing sneakers wasn't really a thing. Once a sneaker would release, Nike would eventually shelf the shoe, and the general public would also expect a brand new silhouette to come in the years to follow as well. But in the city of Baltimore, which is often credited as being the city that saved the Air Force One, the Air Force One silhouette was just that popular that three sneaker retailers, nicknamed the Three Amigos, were basically the first to approach Nike to really introduce the concept of retroing a sneaker. So because the demand in Baltimore was so high, these stores urged Nike to bring back the Air Force One silhouette, and that's where this concept of the Color of the Month series came from. Essentially, every month, they would release a special new colorway of the Air Force One, and you can basically think of this as a precursor to the whole concept of collaborations. So with this year being the 40th anniversary of the Air Force One, that's why Nike's releasing a series of colorways inspired by this story. So this pair released a few months back alongside a white and red pair as well, both pairs retailing for a price of 150 US dollars or 190 Canadian dollars each. And the official colorway for this one is white, royal blue, and gum yellow. So first things first, here's a quick look at the box. And this comes in this retro inspired cardboard box and it's done in this split fashion with orange and this natural cardboard color. And inside the box, it also comes with a special paper, which is taken directly from the original ads of the Air Force One back in the 80s. As for the shoe itself, so this is the Air Force One low silhouette and the upper of the shoe is constructed out of a very premium full grain leather. So on the toe box, you can see we have that same perforated look to it. And right above this, we have this embroidered swoosh in blue. And then surrounding the front toe cap, we have more of that very soft tumbled white leather. And the same leather covers the eyelets of the shoe as well. Beneath this on the mid panel, we have this blue colored swoosh, which is also constructed out of a very premium soft cut of leather. And then the back end of the shoe is covered in more of that white colored leather. And then embroidered at the very top, we have Nike Air branding stitched on in this retro fashion and this blue colored embroidery. In terms of laces, so these only come with one lace option and they're just your standard flat style lace in white. Underneath this, we have a thin leather tongue, unlike the normal nylon tongues that most Air Force Ones come with. But stitched on the top, we have the square tag with Nike Air Force One branding, along with the words anniversary edition in gold. The interior of the shoe is lined in this white colored mesh and it's pretty well padded. And then as for the insoles, these come with their standard foam line insole. It's covered in a blue color textile on top and we have Nike Air branding stamped on the heel in white. Attached to the shoe, it also comes with this Air Force One booklet, which mimics the look of the original branding from 1982. So you can see inside, it gives you a breakdown of the components of the Air Force One, which I thought was a really nice and dope addition. And along with this card, they also give you a toothbrush as well, which is a nod to the fact that people would often clean their Air Force Ones using a toothbrush at home. So the upper of the Air Force One sits atop this chunky rubber cup sole, which is painted in white, except for the air branding on the lateral side of the heel, which is done in blue. In case within this midsole, but not visible to the eye, we do have Nike Air technology for cushioning, and then turning the shoe over to the bottom. Here we have our classic Air Force One outsole, but in this case, this outsole is done in this gum rubber finish. We have the circular pivot point on the forefoot and heel, along with Nike branding found on the medial edge. So that breaks down the look and the construction of these Air Force Ones. And for those wondering about sizing, to me these fit like most of my other Air Force Ones, so I'd recommend for most people to go a half size down, unless you have really wide feet, then you'd probably be better off sticking true to size. 
So I'm a true size 10, slightly on the wider side, and I wear between a 9.5 or a 10, depending on the specific Air Force One release. But for most Air Force Ones that aren't unusually well padded, I'm able to go a half size down to a 9.5, and, and that's what I did with this shoe and it felt great. Moving on to the comfort, so these feel pretty much like any other Air Force One. If you normally find that Air Forces are comfortable, then you'll probably like these. But if you don't like that heavy, clunky feeling, and you don't like feeling really elevated off the ground, then you probably won't like these as well. However, the upper of the shoe, like I mentioned, uses a very soft, broken-in leather. And straight out of the box, it really feels like you've been wearing it for a long time already. So it's not like the cheap plastic leather that has that hard coating to it. This pair, in comparison, you really don't have to break it in. And it feels pretty great already straight out of the box. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and the craftsmanship. So first off, material quality, I thought it was very solid. The leather used on this shoe, it's night and day compared to the GR Air Force One leather. And what I mean by that is that it actually feels like a nice legitimate cut of leather. You run your fingers across it, you can see those natural leather grains, and it doesn't feel synthetic or plasticky at all. However, the craftsmanship on this pair was a little bit sloppy. Some of the panels were inconsistently shaped, and it almost seems like the factory did a pretty rushed job on this pair. I don't know if I just got an unusually bad pair, or if all the pairs across the board are like this, but hopefully, if you guys picked this up as well, your pair was better made than mine. So with all that out of the way now, let me lace these up and I'll show you guys how these look on feet. The Air Force One is forever going to be one of the most iconic shoes in Nike's history. And I think this release celebrates the 40th anniversary of the shoe pretty well. I really like the materials used on this shoe, and the colorway really really spoke to me. With this pair being mostly white, with these bold accents of blue which I thought was really nice, I thought it was paired perfectly with this gum rubber outsole which really tied it all together. This is just one of those shoes you can wear with a lot of different outfits, and you can also leave it by the side of the door as well, making essentially one of your everyday sneakers, and I think it'll look great. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this pair. What are your overall thoughts on the colorway specifically? And in general, are you guys fans of the Air Force One or is it not really your cup of tea? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at sgo8, check out my Twitter at sean.go, and visit my website at seangoca So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Thank you.